It's a bit of a flex pick here from OB Neon. Take a wild guess, John. While we're waiting, give me a wild guess. Is it a mid SK? Is it an off lane SK? I want to say it's an off, just because I, I really like Mirana Sand King, and I think everyone likes it. Okay, who's spamming it this time? Okay, it's Play Hard taking over, so we've got the voice lines going good. But I want it off lane. I have a feeling they're going to do mid, though. I, I think Sand King versus TA. On paper, doesn't sound too bad. You go for a Sandstorm Caustic build, or maybe Sandstorm Burrow Strike split up, but Sandstorm Priority. You burn through her Refraction in lane, and you still get farm. So you can kind of handle it, and you're going to have to invest in detection from the GXR side to prevent the Sand King from just AFK farming in the middle. Could be how Yopage wants to play it. Of course, on the other hand, that's a very passive way of playing the Sand King. So maybe Yopage wants to be a bit more active in this game. They've got that possibility. So either way, it's going to be fine. The Spectre is shown here from GXR. Now Neon can decide, is a Sand King going to be really good against Spectre? I think it is. It's a melee core. You can play with Caustic in that lane. You can line up your arrow with the Burrow Strike and just bully out the Spectre. Make it hard to get the initial farm. We have seen Galaxy Racer dip into that uh, Spectre once or twice now. We'll see how much In Your Dream can get. But I think Neon's got some pretty decent combos up against it, at least early on. That's far down what they, uh, what they get rid of for these final bans. Looks like GXR, they get rid of the Doom, so they are assuming a mid Sand King here. Perhaps maybe just kind of crossing out some, some heroes they don't really want to have to play against. Got to go back to the, the Spectre pick, though. Like, even though it has looked somewhat weak recently in the current meta, I feel like it's going to do quite well in this game. There's not really much mm. in the way of bursting it down. You haven't got the... You haven't got any breaks. You haven't got a natural Spirit Vessel uh, spirit vessel carrier either, unless you want to count the Mirana, but... No real Silver Edge carrier. You could go for the Wraith King, I suppose. But this last pick from Obi Neon it probably has to be centered around... Either finishing the game a lot faster than the Spectre can come up online, or it needs to be a way to deal with the Spectre. Just trying to think what you could mm. pick for the for the off lane, and that probably would have been one of them. The uh, the Timber may have been decent. That's gone. So you don't have the option for the Viper either, which would have been quite nice because you got the Nether Toxin break. Now Ob Neon, they get rid of the Axe. They don't want to have to deal with that. GXR, they go ahead and pick up a Dragon Knight. So that should be the uh, the Mizu offlane Dragon Knight, I believe. Hmm. And OB Neon, they've got one pick for themselves now. What are we going to see? Hmm. It's a bit tricky. You don't have any big offlaners left. Maybe you go for something like the Centaur again for Raging Potato. He does do a fantastic job. And we saw him hit a 13 minute timing with Vanguard Link super quick. So he knows how to work that lane. Up against the Spectre, it's all right. You can still set up for your Murana with your stun. Go for Hoof Stomp arrow combos. And you can kind of play fast with it. Initiate with Stampede or bail out with a Stampede. Um, it isn't quite the burst damage you're looking for, though. So it still doesn't fix the issue with these two really tanky heroes. The DK spec just being able to kind of do what they want, especially as the game goes late. You might be able to do maybe something weird like OD off lane. And then you can kind of try to play around with that, play with the mana difference between the Spectre DK and an OD. As the game scales, the pure damage is always good. Issue is you're running an off lane OD, which is also very, very dead. I don't think that's something Neon will consider. And I can't recall Raging Potato specifically playing it in the last year. So probably not an option, but... Neon are taking your time. I think Centaur is the safest standard offlane. But if they go silly, then OD would be a good way to go silly. Alright, they'll go for the Pango oh. pickup. Fair enough. Where's everyone laning though for OB Neon? Raging Potato, he's in the offlane Pango. Mm. We do indeed have the mid Sand King upon <laughs> us. Do uh. they have enough? Is this going to be enough to deal with what Galaxy Racer have come up with? Like their draft does look quite standard, quite stable. You've got this TA that can take over the mid game. You've got a Dragon Knight that can push down towers very quick and take over map control. And you've got the late game secured with In Your Dream Spectre. I am a bit worried here for OB Neon, John, in this game one. I just don't know if they've got enough with this draft. They've got to play fast. I think they can, but they definitely can't take a break to farm up. They can't rest at all. They have to keep running at the side of GXR. Prevent In Your Dream from farming. 
and prevent alacrity from farming as well. This is fairly greedy from GXR. Right? TA needs Dragonlance, Desolator, Dragonlance, Blink to be up and running before it's comfy, really taking fights. Spectre needs Blade Mail, Manta, and that also takes a well, while. Blade Mail, Manta, or Blade Mail, SNY is what we tend to see. The DK is really your most selfless hero here. It only needs level six, but you want some items on him as well. Whereas for Obi Neon, Pangolier just needs levels. Level six up, he can roll around, set up for his team. Same thing almost with the Sand King. He's going to need a blink. Great King Armlet is enough to show up in fights as well. So there's some early timings that Obi Neon needs to abuse. And they can do it. It's a lot harder. If Once they slip up their timing, GXR has all the time in the world to take this game slow and just ride on the back of a Spectre. Like, you, you don't have any direct counters for it. You have to win out your lanes. And you have to completely bully out in your dream to prevent the Spectre from being a major factor later on. I'll tell you what, John. Let's get some let's get some loop bed odds up while we still have a chance and see what the uh, the the people betting were thinking. Odds, GXR. They are not the favorites. Ob Neon still sitting at one dollar sixty eight into the comparison of of the two dollars eleven. <laughs> Japoy is my idol indeed. From Play Hard, the. I do enjoy play hard spamming out these lines. I, I know you personally enjoy it quite a lot, but it's good fun to see, you know? Yeah, definitely. And, you know, it's nice that we get a bit of a John Uel in, <laughs> even if he's not here. <laughs> no! No, you can't say that, you posh. What did he say? What, what does no. Anjing mean? Am I meant to be saying that? I, I, I can't say it. Okay. So I can't. I've, I've it's, said it's, it. It's naughty. Yeah, you have said it. Very naughty, if you might. <laughs> oh, but that's a great for In Your Dream. He got the D ward. Good free money coming out for Paulson. Sets them up. And that should be nice, but yeah. <laughs> you polish already just throwing the shade. Everyone's good friends, you know? Everyone's been in the scene a while. See a scuffle down bot, though. They trained hard to get here. It's Tatsumi. Stun off. Barra Strike is there. And they've got the arrow. Ooh, Very perfect. nice setup. Perfect setup here from Joe Cam, or rather onto Joe Cam. Yapage immediately with the tip out onto Natsumi. Be enough. Right out. They managed to. They took uh, three bounties as well, so it's a good amount of gold with a first blood bonus coming in. They're gonna feel great here on Obi Neon. Helps you start off in these lanes. Unfortunately for Yapage, that does mean he starts with level one Burrow Strike up against a TA, and that's not. The most amazing. You can clear out the creep wave still. Alacrity can just play around with the side blades. Try to get some spill damage off onto Yopage. It's easier to apply that harassment out. So Yopage is going to need some levels. Level 2 is nicer when you can get Sandstorm. Level 3 is when it feels even better with either level 2 Sandstorm or uh, going 1 1 1 with a caustic value point to abuse that short range on TA. But for now, he's holding steady. Still finding CS and you know, it's going to be a farming lane until you hit higher levels. Maybe by five, it starts to line up for more kills. Absolutely. Well, so over in the uh, the top lane, you've got Polison there, along with In Your Dream. Going to be up against Playhard and Raging Potato. Right now, In Your Dream having a very nice time. Not really struggling at all to secure CS, but never mind that, because Mizu bot lane is not having a very nice time. He'll be chased down by Obi Neon. CTM will go ahead and pick up the kill. And you know, John, that's one thing we didn't talk about. The CTM's now playing position 5 for OBD. Yeah, it, it, it's Skem, you know? He, he's played literally every role across this time from Call to Neon, right? Like, in Geek Fan. He's been... He's just played every single position and he's always shined in him. And he's doing great work. The aggressiveness of this lane as well for not to be... Like, the DK is so passive. He can play with Breed Fire slow down the last hits of Natsumi, but you don't really have too much offensive potential even with a Tusk on hand. Your, your combination with DK is just too slow. So Neon can play this really aggressive and force the issue with a Raid Fire Blast. Woody Inks, well, means he's going to have to watch himself. Maybe when you get level 2 Dragon Blood, it's going to be harder, but before that point, you really should just look to shove the wave and try to get some CS up and not overextend yourself. Quite calm right now. I, I suppose we'll go back to that top lane where we weren't really finished with, with what we were saying, but you've got Polison and In Your Dream against Raging Potato on Play Hard. In Your Dream, again, not struggling. Raging Potato, he'll be able to secure his own CS quite comfortably as well. 
They won't really be able to slow down the Spectre very much in the laning phase, so it does feel like in your dream, should have a decent enough time. A pretty nice start and should spell some good news here for the side of GXR as Playhard and Raging now trying to get a little bit more aggressive onto In Your Dream, but he's already a fairly tanky boy. He'll be just fine. This is a good time for In Your Dream. Uh, you don't really have the natural combo with the Marana to set up for Arrow. You don't have that guaranteed stun coming through. The big spike for Raging Potato oh, would be, cool. say, Orb of Corrosion or his Javelin, whichever one he's trying to rush first. Once you have one of those up, the Swashbuckle feels a lot better. You can get off some really good slows to set up for the Arrow when it's close enough for play hard. And that's when you can play around. For now, the slower start favors in your dream. Paulson's not really being zoned out. He's not really getting some creep pulls, though. That is something he's missing out on, but your Spectre is perfectly fine with just playing like this, having that pause force it in that lane, not really having room to leave, and still finding farm quite nicely. Absolutely. Speaking of finding farm quite nicely, your Paj, top of the CS board on that Sand King. It's one of the real strengths of the, the mid Sand King is you are able to farm real darn quick. With the Sandstorm, with the Core Stick, you can just go back to the neutral camp and start farming that up at mid lane, CTM. He's gonna get snowballed, but he's not gonna drop. In fact, they'll turn now with a Burrow Strike, Stroke of Fate, and Sandstorm. And Joe Camp's gonna drop. CTM will take the kill. We'll get right out of there. Yeah, it's, uh, it's one of those things. You've got level 5 in your Page now, Alakati's at 5 as well. But with the level 3 Sandstorm up, you have so much damage. To watch for that sentry though. Malakti well, is starting to use those side blades to great effect with a refraction. And your Paj isn't exactly tanky. Sand King only having tree armor to start off with doesn't feel great once the hits fly in. So you do have some leeway here. And Alacrity's well, not really zoned out. He's slightly behind, but he's still up there in top two in last hit, so it's still a really even farming lane for Alacrity on the TA anywhere. Arrow. Oh, right through the middle. Hard just threading the needle there with, with the side of GXR. Still 3-0 for OB Neon. I guess this is where their, their draft is quite powerful, right? Like in the earlier stages of the game, you kind of put it out. But you've got a Mirana, Sand King, Grimstroke, and a Rolling Thunder through the Pango. Uh, they are quite potent in that sense. It's throughout the mid-game where GXR and their draft really starts to take over. Oh, Lackety? Mid lane, epicenter, he's been caught out. He will get the Woo. TP away though. Woo, just barely. He TP's back to the Ooh. T1 tower though, so he's gonna have to run all the way back home. Uh, he gets a clarity. He's gonna try for a power rune, it looks like. Hopefully he gets lucky. Yeah, but your Paj, he's gonna start creep skipping <laughs> to try and apply the pressure onto that T1 mid. Yeah, it's really greedy from Lackety, but the uh -oh. six-minute bounty is coming, but Yopaj saw him. <laughs> he saw him for a second. He couldn't believe his eyes. It's <laughs> now the TPs are coming in. Polison. Gonna show up. CTM around. Gives the salve over to the Sand King. Invis rune gonna be picked up as well, but it's the cooldown on the bottle. Oh. He needs time for that Invis rune. The freeze is gonna be there, and Alacrity will come in to clean up. He even committed the Invis. <laughs> oh, how unfortunate. Why was it even on cooldown? Oh. Why, why did he put it in the backpack? I have no clue why it was in the backpack. Uh, it does cost him though, so it does end up being better for Alacti. And you, you saw the effect there, Mike. We love to talk about this with Sand King, but level one epicenter, boy, does it feel like crap. Yep. Just, it couldn't kill Alacti. He had no refractions left, still couldn't do much, although down bot, your Pach is rotating. Natsumi was soloing that lane. Was slightly behind, so they're switching lanes, trying to give Natsumi space out. Yopaj will soak that lane with the DK and prevent that push with a level 1 Dragon form from coming true. But Mizu switches lanes as well. Hollison, top lane, gonna go down. Rolling Thunder, gonna be committed now as they will try to go on to In Your Dream. He's gonna be alright though. He'll keep going after play hard and will be able to secure the kill. And it looks like In Your Dream, yeah, he's just gonna ignore Raging. Disarm here and there. He won't mind too much. He'll just make his way over to the lane and... Raging Potato, he's going to try to be as annoying as humanly possible. But in the end, in your dream, we'll be just fine to get back to farming. Yeah, it's still a really good time for IYD in comparison to Natsumi. Like, his lane, despite the rotation, is still good, although mid. Marge, yeah, Marge strike in. They will get Joe Camp. T1 mid tower, though, is still going down to Alacrity. He didn't really seem to mind too much about Joe Camp dying. 
Yeah, and they do protect for a little bit longer, but it's a pretty substantial amount of damage this early on to that tier 1 mid. Lacrity, it looks like he's not going to be backing off anytime soon either. He is going to commit. Yeah, I mean, he's feeling really strong right now. Level 8 already in the TA. No major item yet beyond the power treads, but neither does Yapaj. Yapaj is trying to save up for his own blink. So he just has a lot more to offer with his skill kit right now. Especially in the damage department, whereas the Sand King doesn't. Uh, they are investing a lot of resources on GXR to get the ward. So look, look at all the sentries mid. Four sentries in the same spot. This one sentry from what? CTM is going to find two of them. But they, they just keep track. <laughs> they really don't want Yapaj to have a good time here. Uh, that's fair. Going back to the comment you made earlier, by the way. God, that epicenter was depressing. It's just, just, just nothing. It's such it's a such, bad spell. It really is. You know, the worst part is as well. It is I believe Ice Frog's whole idea here is Burrow Strike is too good of a stun. But then you've got like Pango with Rolling Thunder, right? And he just rolls around for 13 seconds. Just stunning everyone, doing insane amount of damage. No nerfs for him. He's fine. Yeah. But I mean, you said that, but we, we, we literally saw Raging Potato miss all his rolls, though. So that yeah. can happen, right? Like, Sand King, at least, Burst Strike's a little easier to land. Oh, come so on. it's much more consistent. I think it's harder <laughs> to land a good Burrow Strike than it is a Rolling Thunder. That's fair. That's fair. That's fair. A good one, yeah. You just That's need a driver's license for the Rolling Thunder. You know, Burrow Strike actually takes <laughs> some, some talent. Damn it. Look, they, they get more sentries as well from the onside. So that's like eight sentries you've seen mid? Nine sentries? That's a lot of gold from that's each side fun. to prevent vision for both the TA and the Sand King. That's insane. Joe Cam needs to be cautious, but they want to go into that triangle and force out Alacrity. Thing is, he's already taken the Ancients. So now Obi Neon, they're just kind of running around. Holding each other's hands, but GXR, they understand they just need to avoid the side of Neon right now. They are very strong this early on. Neon, they're not going to find anything. They're just going to back off. Back to their lanes. Yeah, and this is extra bad for your Podge. He went for Blink. He wants to force fights out early while he's, you know, before anything like a Hood of Defiance comes out in any heroes. So there's pressure here to look for that initiation, but they're not really able to. They haven't really gotten a push going for themselves as well. So the tier one mid still healthy, tier one top still at half HP. Bot one is standing as well. So they don't really have map advantage to leverage for those rotations. And this kind of uh, equal state is definitely better for GXR. It's free space for a Spectre. It's free space for a TA. There is a smoke though from Neon. Yapage gets a nice pirate strike with the quick blink dagger out. They are going to commit the epi once again. GXR, well, they still have Mizu alive for a bit longer, but eventually he will go down. And Yapage, I mean, this is a real quick blink. He could be very aggressive with this, and that might just be the game plan. Is just never take the foot off the pedal here for OB Neon. Keep running them down with the Burrow Strike into the arrow. Ipaj, he's about to find two supports for himself. Let's see how good his stuns are. Joe Cam, Polison, grouped up. He only ends up finding one, but the arrow is going to fly through. No, the snowball Ooh. is going to save Joe Cam's life. And Yapage, he has been taken out. They might find some backline heroes and play hard. He's going to leap out of there. The Rolling Thunder, not raging. He's still trying to fight Polison and might eventually get him. But no, he heals up. The swashbuckle will be enough, but at what cost? He's gone. Ooh. Yeah, I mean, it's it's awkward for Neon because they have to play this fast pace to deny GXR the ability to farm. At the same time, they're not that strong. Their damage output's reliant on Epicenter actually being up. Now they're mid-tier once under threat. I mean, the defense is there with the Sandstorm, but Mizu can just go without the Creep Wave. Burrow Strike in, CTM gonna throw the Soulbind down. Joe Cam's around with the Snowball though, but the arrow is gonna be taken by Joe Cam. He'll take it for Mizu, right to the back. Yapage, Burrow Strike in, look how tanky this Tusk is. Joe Cam, he's gonna walk out of there. They don't have the damage out. He's fine. GXR, they're just walking away. And OB Neon, they can't do anything about it. It's a, it's a raindrop. It blocks enough of that magical magic damage that they couldn't burst through. And that's a really awkward position for OB Neon. 
They're 7 to 5 in terms of kills. They're still lagging behind in farm. The space they're giving out to Natsumi is nice. It's not covering the gap between Natsumi and In Your Dream and Alacrity. And mind you, Alacrity is taking a, bit, a slightly active role on that TA as well. Dragonlance up on Alacrity, joining in for the smoke, going into the BKB rush. So, no, Desolator rush. So, getting the damage flying up, they're going to find this tower as well. And that's going to open up the bot jungle for GXR. Obinion has already taken the top with Natsumi. So it is going to be a trade, but with the mid gone, GXR is still going to have more control on the map compared to Obi Neon. They're doing a great job right now, GXR, Obi Neon. They're going to try and keep the pressure up, but it's very, very hard. As you can see, they just seem to be lacking a bit of damage as Arrow does fly out, but you've got Joe Cam around on the Tusk. Ice Blast will not land and Raging. He will commit the Rolling Thunder, but he is eventually going to have to leave. And will. Just chucks a quick U turn. It's, uh, I don't know. I mean, Neon's kind of catching back up slightly in farm. I know the distribution for GXR is a lot better. The only reason Neon has a slight lead is because Mizu's sacrificing his own farm. So Dibage that's wild. Oh, he's in. Oh, they got a nice kill there. Pollison, he's going to die. <laughs> it's one thing. If anyone shows in the map like that, you can snipe them. But in all fairness, yep. that was Pollison on an ancient apparition. It's not the big kill, and they've got to be cautious about overcommitting for those smaller support pickoffs. Maybe they just have confidence with Natsumi, like his Radiance is super close. So at that point, I think we'd have to see them play as five to really run down these heroes, get some openings done for themselves, work from there. Your Dream is actually going for a different build. It's the Echo Saber into Manta. We have not seen that in a while. It's mainly been blade nail builds. But the Echo Saber will allow In Your Dream to have some impact with haunts. If GXR can start to commit for some haunt kills, like say with the Desolator and Alacrity, In Your Dream can run down these supports in the back and make their life a living hell. Like, you cannot deal with it as a Grimstroke. Especially Bosh. if you're way far back from yourself. I mean, your Yopaj is way too far in right now. John Sankin gonna get blown up. In Your Dream will get his third kill of the game on the Spectre. So, uh, the Sanking. We've seen it over and over again. It just, it starts dropping off and you start to get a little bit afraid for OB Neon. It's now raging. It's going to go in. Shards, that's a nice shot out from Joe Cam. He's going to oh protect Mizu. The arrow though, is going to connect. The Inkswell is not going to land Mizu. He's going to be fine. I have never seen that. A Shards to block the Rolling Thunder. It actually traps in Mizu, so he has to take the arrow. But in the end, it works out. Yeah, it's spectacular from Joe Cam blocking him off. And, you know, we were talking about Boom, right? We were talking about Hyde's Tusk. I remember a time where Joe Cam Tusk was on Boom as well. Yep. Mid lane. Raging does end up dropping Polison. I want to take it with the Ice Blast once again. You know, I want to bring your attention to In Your Dream. Have you noticed his item build yet? Yep. Echo Saber Manta. It's again, it's really good for the haunt kills. When they haunt in, he can run down the supports in the back line and do a lot of work. He's diverging from the blade mill, which I like. I think the blade mill is just subpar. It just feels really off. Although mid Mid-lane, again. Epicenter, arrow not gonna land in time. The epicenter, it's about half wasted, and now the snowball's out. They're gonna turn. So Soulbind is there, but is it gonna be enough? Not really. The ice blast flies in. Natsumi's gone. Play hard drops. And they can just focus in on the Raid King now with that secondary line. Ooh. They will lose Joe Cam. Rage is going to try and save the life of Natsumi. But Mizu has a stun out and they will be able to secure the kill. Raging, he's stuck around a bit too long. He's trying to kill Paulison. But that just looks a little bit too desperate. Paulison, he's going to be just fine. In fact, it's Roshan time. Yep, it's not going to take too long. You've got the Desolator in Alacrity. The damage is going to pour right in. And Obi Neon do not have their team fight spell stuff. No Epicenter for the contest. No Moonlight Shadow. They've got the arrow to scout. Are they really going to jump into this? They, they I, can't. I it's they too to. risky here. They might have to, John. I, I don't know what else they're going to do here. They're going to lose play hard, though. Your Pash, he's in. But he's used his Burrow Strike. And they were looking for an angle to try and get a bar strike into the Roshan pit, but now that it's on cooldown, I don't think he's going to make it. And he won't. GXR, they'll get the first Aegis of the game. That'll be enough.
get back to it. A widened lead up to 3k. The timings here for In Your Dream are spectacular. Like, it's pretty much out from what looks or feels like a free lane for him at 9.5k, really even as well with the lag. So GXR has done a fantastic job of getting that farm distribution just right between these two cores. Of course, again, you're sacrificing Muzi, but he doesn't need much. Oh, they've caught out Natsumi. Oh, I love the way GXR's playing this draft, John. Very aggressive, but it's working out very nicely. And it does kind of go back to the Spectre build-up. It, it's quite clever, and I believe we've been seeing this uh, this item build on the Spectre in the Major in particular. But even the added stats you get, the mana regen, along with the double hit, it, it's just such a nice item for Spectre now. It allows in your dream to be able to actually haunt in and join these team fights. Like, yeah, top. it would be able to have more active support. They commit the epicenter to get Joe Camp. That is a pause for task they get. It, it just feels like you have to commit way too much to be able to secure a support kill. It's not worthwhile. With the blink up and raging potato, maybe you can find some other kills now. Like there's less pressure on your posh to land big burrow strikes and epicenters. You can rely on the rolling thunder a lot more and line up your shots. And you need to make something happen though. They're lagging behind with a lineup that shouldn't oh, be at this point. Moonlight Shadow right into Miz with the Soulbind down. Arrow is there. The Dragon Knight is a pretty tanky boy and he's still taking through it. But eventually he should fall and he does. Raging. Trying to go into Alacrity. Alacrity's just man fighting back. But here comes the rest of the squad. He may have waited around a bit too long as the Fire Strike comes in, landing on two. Joe Cam, he was trying to save with the Snowball, but he could not get it off in time. The Aegis, it will come, will at least allow Lacrity to come back. Yopage is going to jump in. Sandstorm there, Refraction burnt out. They will be able to get the TA onto In Your Dream. He will try to Spectral Dagger out, but the arrow not going to land. Joe Cam, Fire Strike's there. They won't have the follow-up. It's uh, probably the first big win for Neon. They did buy back on CTM, though. It's not as good of a feeling, but you do, you do manage to eat through the two lives of Alacrity, take out the big TA, and your dream gets away, so still not too bad for GXR. Your win condition surviving and still building farm. The Mantis already done on IYD. He's got more stats to play with more illusions to send out in these fights, and it's going to feel really tough for Obi Neon every single time Haunt is up. So for GX Star right now, they have to time themselves around Haunt to take these fights and kind of lay it onto Obi Neon. For Neon's end, they have to always play when Epicenter is up and Rolling Thunder. I don't think you want to sit back and stick to this farming game too much, even if you just find supports, and that's more than enough to get your ball rolling. And well, the side of GX Star, even after those kills, they're still kind of set up here. They could wait for the next Roshan, keep building up in the specs. Scotty to fly out next for In Your Dream. All the good stats the Spectre likes in Strength and Agi. And of course, the healing reduction is going to be very helpful against the Wraith King and Sand King. But there is that smoke from Obi Neon. So they've got their spells. They need to make something happen. Smoke broken. Your Pash, he's going to get stunned up. They want to just burst him down, and they will. The Ice Blast will be enough, but the Soulbind is there. They want to try and fight back now. There is no buyback on your Yopage though, so it's going to be quite hard to take this team fight, but they're still going to try as they go into In Your Dream, but he's too tanky. They can't kill anyone. In fact, they're going to lose play hard on the Marana. Every team fight just seems to go the way of GXR now. OB Neon, they just don't have enough in the tank to, to really be able to get this fight going their way. The damage isn't good enough, the durability is also not that high, especially on the Sand King. The positioning of GXR was perfect, we're just standing in this area behind where the tier 1 would be. They're perfect position to break that smoke, very good read on the map from Galaxy Racer, and I don't think they even spotted the smoke with any ward. They have no forward wards in that uh, top triangle area, so just good game read. And they managed to, again, clean up a really good fight, build up and in your dream some more. OB Neon, they still have Epicenter, they could try again, but I think right now you might need to at least buy space for Natsumi, make him your win condition. They will smoke up once more. It's just a four, man. They have left, left Natsumi alone to farm top. They've got to keep the aggression up. They, they don't have much of a choice in the matter here. OB Neon, they've got to 
make something work. That's a nice easy kill they can secure here onto Polison, and they'll get him. It's probably not what they wanted. But it is going to allow them the opportunity to go after that mid-tier 1 tower and open up the map a little bit. And there will be no defense from GXR. You're 23 minutes in, you don't need to defend that any longer. Don't let it go. Yeah, it's late enough. They've gotten full value. Obinion will try to invade the jungle off of that, though. They've got the Moonlight up. Issue is, GXR reads that play. They know tower's gone, it's not safe. They get the scan off to ensure that as well. And Obinion, all they can really do is clear a couple of camps. They were previously cleared out by GXR. It's just more time that they're not achieving what they want to. And it's more time that GXR just gets to farm. Very much in GXR's favor as this game stalls out. They don't really have an objective to play for just yet on Obi Neon as well. No Rosh up. There's a tier one bot, but they haven't really shoved that lane out. So they're just kind of stuck, maybe farming back up again. Trying to work towards some of these items. The AC for Natsumi is going to help against some minus armor coming true from RTA. But that's still a ways off. He's only got the gold really for maybe the Hyperstone or the Plate Mail. And it's going to be a while for the full item, item to be occupied, though. Yeah, Paulison going to be targeted again. They'll commit the epi. No games. They just need anything they can get right now. They'll, they'll take another AA kill onto Paulison. Not much the poor guy can do about it. Once the Burrow Strike does connect, he's, he's basically guaranteed to die. But as long as the rest of his team's farming, I, I'd still say you're okay with this as GXR. Mind you, Natsumi is also farming quite decently, but you just can't forget. You're going into a Spectre, you're going into a TA. Hell, even the Dragon Knight will transition to a pretty pretty big kind of late game powerhouse if it gets that, that late. I think GXR could just have faith in their draft later on. Yeah, there's no pressure. Yeah, I like the itemization for Mizu. This straight up Ags Rush is building into that late game you mentioned. And you know, he's had a slower start. He only has Blink BKB, but that's more than enough for the Dragon Knight to set up for his team. The lead has dropped though. GXR is down to just a 1k lead. But again, if you look at the network uh, chart, it's really just because Mizu is very poor for a DK. So your two big cores are still ahead. Not by much anymore, but you're still certainly happy with having the Spectre and TA as farmed as they are. Uh, Neon, they are catching up. You just need to ensure that this farming that they're doing is going to be worthwhile. Once they reach these spikes with, say, the Shivas on Yopash, the AC on Natsumi, they must make it amount to something. Nice you still blast. don't want to drag this late. Nice blink away. Quick reactions from Yopash, but the Snowball is actually going to connect with the Shards. We'll give Vision. They get, they get the Walrus Punch. Not quite. Very close, but not quite there. Our raging try and set up maybe in the mid lane on that pango, but not going to be able to close the gap onto Mizu. And in the meantime, in your dream now, has farmed up the full eye of Skadi. And raging Ooh. has been caught out. Or his punch is there, and they will just blow him up. Just takes one stun, and you've got the follow up there. Still proving to be a, an extremely difficult game for OB Neon. You are at that point now where the game is basically on Natsumi's shoulders. Can the Wraith King do it? Snowball is out. Play hard. Gonna try and run. They've got the control. They'll get another the kill. Natsu, he's desperately trying to farm up the best he can here on that Wraith King. But he just needs so much more time. Yeah, it's way too much time he needs. Like, you've got the level 20 spike up on Natsumi and on In Your Dream. But the Scotty being up means he can rip right through in Natsumi. He got scanned out here, Mizu. Blessings. Like, he didn't see him through the fog. Courier has been killed. Like, get his courier. That was the AC. It's about 200 gold off the plate mail. And well, now he's going to have to wait about three minutes to have that AC up. That's going to hurt. 
fact, it might hurt even more if they catch him out now. The Ice Blast is going to fly through. Mizu has the stun out. This should be more than enough to at least get through the first life. They're going to try and fight back. The Soulbind is there. They jump in with a big Burrow Strike out as well. Just locking down two. And there's the Epicenter now. Onto Alacrity, but he pops the BKB. He will survive in your dream. Meanwhile, he'll kill, he kills off CTM. And Raging Potato is also going to drop. They could not kill off the TA. In fact, Mizu, he is not done yet. They got the first life of the Wraith King. They're going to try and fight this one out. But I don't know about this for Natsumi. As Mizu, he's going to BKB and just walk away. And now Natsumi, he can dance as much as he wants. But it's not going to work out in his favor. In your dream, we'll let them know about it. They threw everything at Alacrity. And he still gets away. Yeah, that's just nuts. Like, it looked fairly good to start with from GXR. The Soulbind bot Ubini on some time. There's, there's just no follow-up. They just lack the damage. Sand King's just not enough. And look how fast this Roche melts with a TA, with a tag team. It's not going to take too long. That's Aegis, Cheese, and Ag Shard. And GXR already setting up to run forward afterwards. Shard is going to our Spectre here, so dispersion on a hero. Timor is going to connect in time. Ice Blast not going to be there, but the Shards... You connect. Even a, a spectral dagger thrown out just for good measure. Meanwhile, Mollison. Raging's gonna take him out. But he's gonna get a find a way out now. They seem to think that Raging's team's behind him. So they don't go after him. Oh, he messed up. He was trying to go up the staircase. Ouch. You fucked for many a noble cause, Dante. Yeah, it's Why choose not shaping up well for Neon. Raging's just trying to buy space out, stall the game as much as he can for at least that courier to be back up for Natsumi so he can finish up the AC. The AC is just not enough by itself. Like, it doesn't fix, fix your damage issue. You need so much more to fly in. You need Yopa. She's trying to go for this E Blade along with a Shiva's already on him. Uh, that can help. Um, at least it's also like a soft disarm for the TA or the Spectre. So you prevent them from getting their hits off. Once you get the shot out, it's just way off. Like, it's still a lot of farm. You pause, needs, and there's not much map space left for Obi Neon to farm here. Oh, they got the stun off as well. Ice Blast gonna fly through your Page. He's locked down. He's gone. Born forward. They won't play hard too, and they might just get him. Double kill. Your dream with that eye of Skadi just slowing down the Marana so much. And... Well, 11k net worth lead is now there for Galaxy Racer Gaming or Esports, excuse me. I keep saying gaming, but it is Galaxy Racer Esports. <laughs> the GXR, they'll keep it up. Dota Plus. 86% the way of GXR. And I'd argue it's probably higher than that. Probably hasn't updated oh, yeah. quite yet. Oh. Sun out, Mizu. Not raging. They don't really want to go for the dive. They just want the easy T3 tower. Gepage can't buy back. Raging, he's going to commit the Rolling Thunder to try and scare them back. Joe Kamaken with the shards kind of blocking the staircase. So he's going to go in. He's already lost the T3. They're going to leave it at that. Even with the Aegis up, they're not willing to overextend. They'll get the tier 3, they'll leave the racks, they'll back off. Yeah, it's still really nice for GXR. Someone's always going to have to respond to the mid if it's way too shoved in. Without the tower, there's no protection. And GXR now, 13k lead on their side. Really shaping up nicely. And your dream is he actually going Radiance here. No, he's going up for a Nullfire. So I like this one on IYD. Nullfire coming through. Much so deadly on the Spectre. If he focuses on one, he's just you're just going to be held back. And you have to be cautious. Oh, right. They go down to Joe Cam, but the Ice Blast is going to be pretty big onto two heroes. They've blown up Joe Cam, but what's it going to cost them? Yo, Pash, he's so darn low on HP, he is going to die out. They also found the first life on Natsumi. This is looking really bad already for OB Neon. As now Playhard is being controlled up buy in your dream they are still going on the Wraith King as well and they will be able to secure the kill it's raging he can't really help but now what? he's stuck he's gotten stuck 
onto the high ground. He's going to try and survive that way, but they have the stun out. Four down with that buyback. Neon, they might be yeah. about close to calling it now. This game, it's starting to feel quite impossible. Yeah, it's, it's a tough one. And they still have Haunt. Oh, they're going to rub it in. CTM. Where were you going, sir? <laughs> a one-man Haunt from IYD just to get the full team wipe. Very worthwhile as they dig into the top set of racks. Mid is being split pushed by Mizu. They can't take Mega Creeps, but they could just line up for those tier fours if they wanted to. That Haunt would have been worthwhile if he used the, uh, the voice line straight after, John. Would have been hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in your dream. Sloppy. Sloppy. Sloppy indeed. Yeah. Yeah. Gotta we'll clean talk up. To him about it afterwards. We'll, we'll sort it out. <laughs> Tier 2 tower, bot lane. Gonna be very easy to clean up here in your dream. Do they want to just go high ground again? I mean, the two racks is up. The 22k ahead. They're gonna play it safe. They're not yep. gonna waste the age sign. In fact, there it goes. Yeah, they. They let it expire. A good timely time to pull back. Just, I, I don't know. I don't know if I want to say farm some more because they're already getting farmed. So maybe just, I don't know, finish up this hurricane pike. Unlike he's got the satanic up in the TA. So sitting at 3.2k HP, 26 armor. You don't have enough burst to deal with the TA. BKB up as well in the lack TA. It's seven seconds of course. I don't know how you kill a TA with this much HP. You know, you never see a TA with this much HP ever. So Neon's got to find a solution. They will smoke up with the Moonlight out. They're going to make one play outside of base. We'll see if they catch a big one. Oh, Mizu, he might just be there. Yeah, he jumps in. He wants to just go straight for the fight. The big, big dragon. He has the Aghanim Scepter out. Yapage already so down low. Paulson, or rather, Joe Camp going to try and go in and burst him down. Aeon Shell out. He's going to protect the day for Natsumi. He will take him down. Neon. That'll be enough. With a task kill, yep. they j they don't feel confident enough to keep going, and, and that's fair. Yeah, they didn't really expend the epicenter, but I think the big one's Soulbind. They need that for their control. They need it for the double stuns coming through. And if they expend that, they have to take the back seat. One way that Neon could bounce back beyond, you know, maybe not to be farming like a madman is CTM finishing up this Ags. Dark Portrait will do you a lot of good, especially if you grab the Spectre as your illusion. So CTM probably needs some farm priority here and just work towards the Ags, get Dark Portrait up, clone the Spectre, and probably hope for the best. That's definitely one way to get that done for OB Neon as they're still playing against a 22k deficit, but the Dark Portrait will turn some of that deficit against GXR. So let's see if it'll get the space up and running. Still limited in area to farm. They're all kind of stuck in the triangle. Natsumi's the only one who can dip outside Lin. They will maybe spot a couple of viewers here. Perhaps. See how they want to try and, try and initiate here. They won't. GXR, very, very patient. Would have loved for the initiation. Oh, Yapashi blinked in. Shards will be off the mark. Trap does connect, but they aren't going to chase up the high ground. So it does seem like GXR are going to be waiting out that next Roshan, and we will be finding out in about 15 seconds when it does come up. In fact, they are going to go for a smoke beforehand. It'd be very nice for, for GXR if this was a, an early Rosh timer. Ooh, and it's it won't a long be. one. Three minutes. The Natsumi. Longest. Oh, they're going to run in an illusion. They got the illusion real good. Haunt in, though, in your dream. He's found Natsumi. He wants to go straight after the Wraith King. Even the side blades from the back line already takes out one life. They'll just keep going now. Mizu on the high ground. Oh. A big epicenter. Burrow strike. Yapash. He might be able to turn it. Or maybe not. It looks like he's set to fall. They are all melting on the side of OB Neon. They'll buy back. But this is looking very, very over. They might try one more defense. Yep, they they did kill off in your dream. Oh. That was a good injection of gold. They nah. call. All right, fair enough. I 
I think they knew. Like this, this game looked a bit over by 15, if I'll be frank. But considering that you had this amazing start on your Spectre and on your TA, you know, I hate this it, Mike, but it goes back to that draft. Oh, it's God. the Sand King. It's the Sand King. Like you, you it's just gonna like do anything in that lane. I mean, we we, we, I, you, we, you, we you accuse me. Like it. It's both of us. It's both of us. We, <laughs> it's like you you had Sand King Marana, and I think I heard, I heard the upper div casters mauled about this as well in one of the matches. I heard him. I, I heard. I think Tsunami mauled about it. it's like you've got Sand King Marana. Why do you need to play around with it? But they do. Neon drop a game because of that. And mind you, it's not like this is upper bracket where they can lose a game and you know feel fine if they lose the series. If they lose the series, they're out. So Neon's got to step up to the plate, clean up their act in game two. Otherwise, a GXR, they might move on, and you never know. Boom might get their wish to actually see you in your dream in the grand finals. There you go. It might happen. What is also mold-inducing, John, is you're still saying Tsunami. I've told you many times, sir. You've got to ignore the T. And just go say Tsunami. Just Tsunami. <laughs> I'll try. I'll try. I feel like it's weebier to say it with a T. It is weeby, but... for sure. But, you know, yeah, yeah. I, I guess you do see yourself as a bit of a weeb. So that, that's fair enough. We'll, <laughs> we'll go with that for now. So it is MLP Donor and John X-Fire. We'll be back in about 10 minutes for game number two's draft. We'll see you then.